So in the last chapter, um, Arthur was at the hospital with Mr. Hampton, and um, he told him he would help him um, keep his masterpiece going, his artwork, and he had to call Officer Billy for a ride home. All right, so we're on 143.31. Officer Billy showed up at the hospital wearing a pair of white pajamas. At least that's what Arthur thought at first. He was in the waiting room with the old lady and all of the other permanent-looking hospital visitors when Officer Billy barreled through the door about an hour after he'd called her. Her dark hair was sticking up in spiky tufts and a brown purse dangled loosely over her arm. I did not picture her with dark hair. No, I just... I pictured her with like blonde short hair for some reason. I yeah. Arthur was so used to seeing Officer Billy in her pre precisely creased uniform that he might not have recognized her if it hadn't been for the voice. Mr. Owens, there you are, she belted out. I've been trying to locate you all over the hospital. Arthur wouldn't have admitted it to anyone. They would have had a field day with it at Juvie, but he was sort of glad to see his probation officer. Tap of 144. Karate, oh, Officer Billy said, explaining her odd outfit as she came over to Arthur. Saturday classes, so she's not in pajamas. She's in a karate uniform. What color belt We're on 144, in case you were wondering. Did it say? I don't know. Yellow. Arthur added this to the very short list of surprising things he'd learned about Officer Billy. She made caramel corn and she did karate. Are you all right? The probation officer studied him with her stern cop gaze. It was like sitting under a lamp. It made Arthur sweat. Yeah, kind of. What happened? As Arthur started to answer, Officer Billy glanced around at the other people in the waiting room, who were desperately trying to seem as if they weren't hanging on every word. Wait, she said, holding up her hand. We'll talk outside. Arthur was surprised to see it was still light out. He felt like it should be way past supper time, but there, was some, there were some streaks of pinkish yellow left in the sky. The rain seemed to have stopped. Big puddles filled the parking lot. Cars over here, Officer Billy pointed at an old blue Pontiac. Nothing fancy, no sirens on this one, she said with a joking grin as she opened the door for him. The car smelled like fast food. Officer Billy had to brush some wrappers and leftover fries off the passenger seat before Arthur sat down. Let me get the door, she said automatically, closing it with a firm thump. Top of 145. As they waited in a line of traffic, the officer finally turned to Arthur and said, Now, let's hear the details. Arthur kept his eyes focused on the scene outside the car window. I don't know, he answered truthfully. Mr. Hampton was on the floor of his garage when I got there this morning. I couldn't tell what happened or how long he'd been there. He didn't mention what Mr. Hampton had been working on. If Officer Billy didn't already know what the guy was doing, he wasn't going to be the one to tell her. Plus, he wasn't even sure he could explain it. So you got help and went to the hospital with him? Arthur nodded. Well, I'm extremely proud of you for being in the right place at the right time, Ar Officer Billy uh, said. In his mind, Arthur added, instead of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, like you usually are, the judge will be pleased to hear what you did for Mr. Hampton today. Then there was a strange pause. Arthur had the feeling Officer Billy was going to say something else, but changed her mind. You hungry? She asked as the light in front of them turned green. How about a burger or something? My treat. Arthur didn't want to spend any more time with Officer Billy than necessary, but he knew there wouldn't be any supper at home since his mom was gone. Having eaten nothing for hours, top of 146, he couldn't bring himself to turn down a burger and fries, no matter who bought them. All right, sure, he agreed. Officer Billy pulled into the parking lot of a small diner. It looked pretty empty. Inside, there were about a dozen tables with red checkered cloths and a row of worn booths. We'll take a booth, Officer Billy said to the waitress, who seemed to know her. She put them in a corner, one that could have fit a family of eight. Arthur figured Officer Billy probably brought all of her juvenile delinquents there. Order whatever you want, Officer Billy said. I've already eaten. She told the waitress all she needed was a cup of black coffee. Arthur didn't want to be greedy, although he could have polished off about three of the diner's big platter specials. All he ordered was a cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. Fortunately, everything came pretty quickly. He was just finishing his meal, carefully scraping up the last globs of ketchup with his fries, when Officer Billy said she had something serious to talk about now that he was done eating. Right, right then, Arthur knew he should never have agreed to Officer Billy's offer of a free meal. He'd been on the receiving end of enough bad news to know when more was coming. Uh, Officer Billy sighed and folded her hands in front of her. 
I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know I don't sugarcoat things. What does that mean to sugarcoat something? Make it not sound bad. Yeah, yeah. When you sugarcoat something, it means you make it sound better than it is. So, um... Unless you're helping die. Like not, yeah, not making it sound, making it sound better. Top of 147. Officer, oh, sorry, Arthur, Arthur nervously swallowed the last of his watery, watery Coke as if that would help the sudden dryness in his mouth. He had no idea what to expect. All right, Officer Billy cleared her throat. I didn't want to have to be the one to tell you this, but I think you need to know the truth, especially after what happened today. She paused and looked at Arthur. I'm sure you've already guessed that Mr. Hampton is very ill. No, Arthur thought. He hadn't guessed anything. That morning was the first time he'd actually seen Mr. Hampton since the day in court. But he decided it wasn't a smart idea to share that fact with Officer Billy now. So he stayed quiet and let her keep talking. The truth is, the officer continued, he may not have a lot of time left. Arthur tried not to jump to the worst conclusions right away. What do you mean? He asked carefully. Mr. Hampton is dying of cancer, stomach cancer. Officer Billy said in a voice that reminded Arthur of how the cops had told him about his dad. Tom Owens died instantly. Officer Billy drummed her fingers on the side of her coffee mug. He told the judge about it, but he didn't want anyone else to know. He didn't want it to affect your sentence, and he especially didn't want you to be told, she added. Arthur wasn't sure what to say. What went through his mind first was, why did all of this bad stuff keep happening to him? Why could the guy he just started to get to know be dying of cancer? Top of 148. What would it mean for his probation and all of the work he'd done for him so far? So what's going to happen now, he asked, feeling kind of stunned with everything. Well, Officer Billy said slowly, I guess you'll keep working for Mr. Hampton as long as he wants you to. What? Arthur's eyes darted toward Officer Billy. You mean until he, he couldn't bring himself to say dies. No, I'm not saying that exactly. I can't do that, Arthur said quickly. No matter what the judge says, I can't. Even if it sounded terrible, there was no way he could be around someone who was dying. He knew it would bring back all the bad memories of his dad's death. The judge couldn't make him do that, could he? My father died in a motorcycle crash this past summer. Did you know that? Arthur blurted out. For reasons he couldn't explain, his eyes started to sting with tears. Embarrassed, he slid out of the booth and began yanking on his coat. He had to leave. He could hardly see what he was doing. Yes, Officer Billy answered calmly. She picked up the check and waved it at the waitress to show she was ready to pay. I am aware of that fact. He hit a tree and died instantly. Yes, I'm aware of that. I'm not going to go through all that again, Arthur said, his voice rising. I'm not doing it. Tell the judge he needs to find someone else. Okay, said Officer Billy, not showing any emotion at all. I'll inform the judge of your wishes. Seriously, I'm not going back. Arthur shouted over his shoulder as he headed for the door and pushed it open. Glad for the darkness, glad for the rain, which was falling again. So he like gets really upset um, when he learns that James Hampton is dying of cancer and he's like doesn't want to work for him anymore because his dad just died, so he doesn't want to go through that again. So it's really um, kind of upsetting to him. All right, we're going to read the next one. It is so short. Holy moly. This is 32. We're on 150. Look at that. So, so short. That night, Arthur had another one of his bad dreams about his dad. In this dream, he had to go around the city collecting empty beer bottles in order to save his father's life. It wasn't difficult to figure out where this dream came from. Each time Arthur filled a sack with bottles, he'd bring it to Officer Billy, who would weigh it on a gigantic scale in the courthouse, and each time she'd squint at the number on the scale, shake her head, and say, not enough. Then Arthur would stumble back into the darkness to try and find more. At the same time, uh, sorry, at the same time he was desperately collecting all the bottles he could find, police cars were getting closer and closer to the door of his house. So the dream became one of those horrible races against time. Oh, that sounds stressful. Could Arthur collect enough bottles before the police arrived to say his dad was dead? <clears throat> In the dream, it was a warm and rainy August night, just like the night his dad died. Arthur kept slipping and falling on the slick streets. Bottles kept rolling out of sight and disappearing as he reached for them. Officer Billy kept saying, not enough, not enough. Arthur had a lot of these dreams, dreams where he was trying to save his dad. They all ended the same way. He always woke up before he could succeed. So he has like a crazy dream where 
part, different parts of his life are like all smushed together in one dream. That happens to me all the time. Um, and he has to save his dad by collecting junk, which is like a direct connection. Direct connection to what's happening. All right. Um, we're going to stop.